And then we're going to get, what's the last thing? You see the minus x to the fourth two? Don't forget about the exponent. If you make the exponent <coughs> incorrect, if you make the exponent incorrect, it's not going to come out right. So you need to really be careful about your distribution. Don't forget to distribute that last part. You got me? What happens here that's nice? Yeah, oh, that's great. I love that. Two square root of x to the fourth plus 2 plus x squared. So far so good? Okay. Hmm. Can we do that legally? Can we just say 2 over infinity? Well, I don't know. Especially if this is a, especially if you did this. Especially if you did that, that would be a big problem. Do you see that? That would be an issue. So what we're going to do is make sure about it. You're going to start dividing by the largest power in the denominator. Again, just like you normally would. So what's the largest power in the, especially if I give you this one, okay? What if that was 2x? That would be a big problem. This one, yeah, Scott's right. You probably could look at this and go, that's 2. That's infinity plus, in, that's infinity. There's no way that that's not going to be infinity. You got me? This is going to go to zero. He's right. But to check your work, especially if you have something like this, that might not go to infinity. That definitely wouldn't go to infinity. Okay? That wouldn't. So to check your work, to show that, what you're going to do is go, all right, well, let's divide everything by the largest power in the denominator. Now, don't trick yourself here. The largest power in the denominator is not x to the fourth. It's not x to the fourth. What is it? Yeah, the way you can think about it. Cover up the rest of it, look at the largest term. What's the square root of x to the fourth? It's x squared. That's your largest power. It's the square root of that, because it's inside a square root. So divide everything by that. I'm making you do this because I want you to see one more time this, this setup. Notice we're dividing by x squared. If I divide this by x squared, is that going to work here? Is this okay? No. Can I take that inside of that square root? Okay, so think back to what we did. This is fine, right? This is fine. That's, that's great. That's what we like. What does this do? What now? Oh, oh okay. We get stuck. Uh -oh. Square root of x to the fourth. Square root of x to the fourth would be great. Did you say that already? Yeah. I was thinking. I was. My mind was wandering. So <laughs> I was thinking about the Simpsons. Um, <laughs> so, well, since this is x squared and this is x squared, we need to make this equal to x squared, but it also has to have a square root around it. You follow? You can't just do this because that's x. So change the power. Is that true? Now, some of you are going to ask me, well, wait a second, Mr. Leonard, don't you have to have some absolute value here? Let me ask you this question. Is this always true? That actually is always true, no matter what. No absolute value needed because you have all positive, all positive. It's always going to be the same. Does that make sense? So we don't even need that for this case. So here we're going to have... Just wanted you to see that one time. 2 over x squared, all over. We're going to have the square root. If you think about it, this is going to be 1 plus 2 over x to the fourth. Do you see the 1 plus 2 over x to the fourth? Yes, no? Yeah. We get the 1 x to the fourth over x to the fourth plus the 2 over x to the fourth plus 1. Show of hands, how many people feel okay getting down to that far? Well, that's not many. Let's have some questions if you guys are, are not so, so okay on this. Are you okay on rationalizing? <coughs> yeah? Are you okay on crossing those things out? Well, that should be easy. That's the fun part. Are you okay on dividing by x squared because that is the largest power in your denominator? Are you okay on doing the square root of x to the fourth because that's still x squared? Then we take it inside. We have x to the fourth over x to the fourth. That's one. Two over x to the fourth. 2 over x to the 4th. x squared over x squared, that's 1. 
Where does this go, ladies and gentlemen, when we're taking it to infinity? Where does that go? Yeah. Is it okay to have zero on the top of a fraction? Yeah. Where does this go? Where does this go? Where does this go? Would you agree that this denominator goes to two? So this equals zero over two or zero. You're going to notice in this case, if I change that to a negative, nothing about this changes. I don't have any absolute value. Nothing changes. That says the horizontal asymptote in both directions is at zero. That's what it's going to be. You follow me on that one? Would you like to see one more case? Yeah. yeah. So, would that be all positive uh, exponents? Or even exponents? Would that be the case? We just start with the even one there. That was, I'm sorry, I'll do that. was even. Divided by. Oh, I don't know. It really depends on what you have. I can't say a cover all situation for every time. I don't know. Shall we change the problem just a little bit? Let's change the problem just a little bit, all right? So what I'm going to do, instead of doing a whole completely new one, do you have any questions on this? We're going to see how it changes if I do this little bit to it. That. Okay, if that changes our problem at all. Let's see the things that change. Let's go through our problem. I'll try to use a different color pen so you see the differences. Can you still rationalize? What's the only thing that changes about our rationalization? That's going to be a uh, <coughs> squared. An x squared. Are you alright with that so far? Okay. What changes here, ladies and gentlemen, when I distribute? What changes? Just an x squared. You see it? It'd be kind of silly to do the whole example again, right? It's pretty much the same thing. That would be an x squared, and this would be an x squared. You still okay? Well, what happens here then is this is an x squared. And that's an x squared. True? Okay. So, okay, well, well, hang on a second then. Well, if that's the case, are we still going to be dividing by x squared down here? Yeah, because that's still the largest power. That's, that's not. That actually, if you looked at it, would be x. The square root of x squared is x. So that wouldn't be the largest power. We still divide by x squared. We still divide by x squared. But now I have an x squared right there. That 2x squared, that's right there. This would look almost the same, except I have an x squared there. What that means is I have a limit as x approaches positive infinity of 2 over, this is going to give you 1 plus 2 over x squared. You know, I'll show all the work for you in case you're having trouble following me. x to the fourth over x to the fourth plus 2x squared over x to the fourth. x squared over x squared. Are you guys satisfied with that one? Hopefully. Yeah. Okay, good. This gives you 1. So we're still at 2. That gives you 1. This gives you 2 over x squared. And that gives you 1. We're now ready to take the limit. Ready to let the x go to infinity. What happens to our 2? Does it go to 0? It didn't last time because we had an over x. Where's that go? Where's that go? Where's that go? What is it? We've got a 2 over the square root of 1 plus 0 plus 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1. That's the square root of 1, that's 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. We get 2 over 2. Did it change? Yeah. So, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So that, that little change there said we're not at 0 anymore. We have a horizontal asymptote at now 1. So we're going at 1 for at, when we get to infinity. How do you feel okay with what we've talked about so far? Good. 
just such good stuff. Just kidding. Fine. So, okay. <coughs> allergies are getting to me. Okay, last one. Is it making sense so far? Can you follow that? Shane, you okay? There's no such thing as conjugate here. Um, this is nothing to distribute. Multiply it by itself. On the top and the bottom, you should. Turn it into a limit. Just think about it for a second. No derivatives. <laughs> oh, good try, though. When you don't really have an derivative. Good try. That was one of those five percent. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, close. No. Huh? Why? It's going to. You have a negative under the square root. Ah. So if I take really big positive numbers, subtract them from seven, are they going to be positive or negative? Negative. And they're under a square root. Square root. Doesn't exist. That was the easiest problem of the day. Come on. <laughs> no, it doesn't exist. So think about your limits. I mean, you can think of them like that. You have a 7 minus something huge. 7 minus something huge is something really negative. Square root of something negative is undefined, therefore the limit does not exist. Does that make sense? Now, if I did this, it's not harder. It's the same idea. You have 7 plus a really big number. The 7 plus a really big number squared <coughs> to that is still a really big number. It's the infinity. All right? So you can, see, you can think of that. The only problems you really come up with is when you do things like infinity plus or minus infinity, infinity over infinity. Uh, that sort of thing gets you. You can't do those. But if you know it's going to infinity or it's not going anywhere, that's fine. That's okay. You can, you can consider things like that. There's no denominator, nothing to divide by. You're good. Does that make sense? So negative infinity would still be... This, no, this is actually. Yes. Do you feel okay with our limits? Have I blown your minds yet today? Yes. So, when you have issues where you're subtracting infinities, rationalize them. If you have a square root, rationalize them. If you don't, Think through the limit, what it means to go to infinity. Consider the type of problem that you have. You already know polynomials. Any polynomial is going to go to positive or negative infinity, right? We talked about that last time. You said, well, it follows really the leading coefficient, or leading term, sorry, the power of leading term. So uh, x cubed, if it's, it's going to go up. Or if it's negative, x cubed, it's going to go down. And things like that happen. So be prepared for those limits. Are there any questions before we continue?